In this week's video we're going to be looking at dark and moodier edits using Luminar Neo and I'm going to jump straight into this video and it's just to let you see how much you can actually change an image from what you actually captured to the end result. So let's dive right in. So this is the image we're going to be working with. This is actually one of the JPEGs that didn't work for this shot, but I'm going to show you again, like last week's video, if you've watched that, perhaps we can resurrect this image into a different form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump through these edits, and if there's any edits that take a while, like previous video, what I'll do is I'll speed up that area. So the first thing for me, Structure AI, I always push that first because I'm trying to balance out what I need within the image. The details, the structure, the enhance, I tend to work with them first and it gives me a good starting point for my images. And I'll go into the details and I'm going to push them as well. I'm going to be careful with the details though. And I don't want too much detail within it, I just want enough to make it pop slightly. Again, happy with that. Next I'm going to get into the develop panel and I'm going to bring back the exposure slightly. Not too much, but just enough to drop the image back. And from that you can see that it's dropped it back quite a bit. That may seem too much, but for what I'm going for with this image, it might be okay just now. I may push it just a tiny bit there. The shadows I'll bring back as well. Because I'm wanting quite a dramatic look with, for this image. Something completely different from that. So that's us in here. Next with this one, I am going to go into the mystical. And I'm going to soften everything down using mystical. So we get that there. And you can see the difference, if I flick that on and off, you can see the difference. Which may, you think, will go against the fact that I am, I've just sharpened everything using the AI and the details. But for the mood of the entire image, sometimes you, you have to add things to take things away to get the final feel for your image. Again, quite happy with that. I'm then going to get into Glow. And within the Glow... If I go into the Orton effect and I push that slightly, I'm actually going to push it too much so that you can see what happens. It increases everything in there, but it also increases the shadows as well, and shadows don't glow. So I could do that and then paint it in, but there's only certain areas I want the glow to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back the Orton effect, and I'm actually going to change it to soft, just to glow. I'm going to push it slightly, to see what it does and just to see how it has an effect over the entire image before I choose my areas. So I'm going to push it quite far. Let's push it to about there. The glow I'm going to add is up here. So I'm going to get with the brush. I'm going to paint it in. I'm going to leave my strength and, strength and softness at 100%. The size I'm going to take up and I'm just going to paint in there. Because I want my, the viewer's eyes drawn to this. I may take some of that out actually because I've drawn too much of a shape in there. I've actually matched the shape of that and I don't want that. So I'm going to take some of that back out just in there. And if I flick that on and off, you should see a slight difference. And again, I'm going to leave it at that for this. So that's the glow done. I'm going to get in and apply another develop edit. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back the exposure just to around about there. And that I'm happier with. I am happier with that because I now can see better what I'm going to do with the image. The highlights I'm going to leave, the shadows I'm going to leave here. We're trying to create a kind of dark, moody image. Close that down, it resets, as you know, and then we go back in. What I'm going to do is I am going to put in highlights here. So this one may take, I'll just paint them quite liberally with this. So I'm going to get into develop and I'm going to push the exposure this time. 
But what I'm looking for is just to see how it affects these areas. Nothing more than that. And now I can see it's lifted that quite a bit. And I may pull this effect back. But what I'm going to do, and I'll probably speed the video up for this, is I am going to pick certain areas. Imagine it is dodging and burning with this, except this time uh, we are just going to be picking the highlights. So we're just going to be dodging this. So I'm going to use this as dodging. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn the strength down. The softness, I'm going to keep it 100%, but I'm going to take the size down. And I'll use the keyboard shortcuts for this. So I'm on the paint module. And I'm just going to paint it in in certain areas. Now, hopefully you saw that appear straight away. So you should get the idea of what I'm going to do now. And what I'll do at this point is I'll speed up the video. Not too much of a difference at the moment. It looks as if we have just turned down the exposure, edited some of the highlights, and it just changes how the image looks. So if you have the before, which you may prefer, that's unedited, that's just a JPEG straight from the raw file. And then we have this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back into Glow and I want the emphasis up here in this waterfall. So I've got it at soft focus. I'm going to pull it right in there and you can see that it's even probably blown out the highlights there. But for this image, I'm not actually too bothered with this. So I may even push it further. Softness may even push further as well, just so that our eyes are drawn up here. Now, I'm going to paint this in. I only want it in in that area there. And as you can see, the brush is quite big. So if I go in here, basically we're just adding a glow to this. And the strength is not too much, so let's push the strength for this. And let's do that. So that we are drawn to this waterfall or we lead the viewer's eyes into the waterfall. So you can see the glow there already and just the glow that that's created. Now I could overpaint that and overpaint that, but I don't want to do it too much. I may come down there a tiny bit just so that we're drawn in and extend it out just ever so slightly. I'm trying not to follow the shape of this. Uh, I don't want any glow down here. I only want it in that area. So what I can do now is I can go into the soft focus and I can increase the softness of it. Or I can bring it back. So I'm going to increase it slightly. The brightness as well. I can push it to there. And again, that definitely draws us up. Yes, it blows out the highlights. But I'll be honest, I'm not too bothered with the image. I'm just basically discovering what the software can do. Contrast, I can push as well. And that for me is way too much. So I'm going to reset the contrast. I may even bring it back slightly to allow the softness to come through to around about there. Now, warmth is set at zero. If I go too much here, we lose the white and we then create a blue or a coolness in the waterfall. Again, I don't want that. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to turn the glow down. Turn the glow off, sorry. So from here, we're probably going to increase the glow again in there and use different sliders to do that. And one of them that I could go in to do is I could go into the mystical and increase the mystical. And you'll see that that has really increased that there. Smoothness, I can push it even further. Uh, colorize, we don't want any, so I can take the saturation out of it and you can see that that draws everything back. Uh, shadows, I don't want to play with. So we can do that and you can see how much it's affected it or I can push it that way. Remember, this is working out as a global edit just now, but I'm only focusing on the waterfall. Again, brush. 100% softness at 100% and I'm just going to paint in there this time and now I'm not following rough where I was the last time I'm just using it to increase what we've previously done so that I'm quite happy with and to be honest I'm nearly done with the image we've made quite a few edits and 10 in total as you can see we have the 10 edits there the final one just to wrap this up 
as the vignette. Now I'm going to choose the subject area for this vignette and you can guess the subject area is going to be up here. So I'm going to choose subject and I'm going to put that there. Quite happy. Let's turn this right down. And we should now be drawn into that area. Now that may be too much. So if we take it to be there, what we've done is really we've drawn the eyes right through. That is now the brightest area in the image as you're led through it. You can see the mistakes by doing this type of edit. You can see the mistakes within the image. If you look at the waterfall down here, that is also partially due to over-processing the image as well. So if you get this and this type of effect, this type of banding, it could be down to over-processing the image. Now, in this case, I'm processing a JPEG. If I was to process the RAW file, I may not get that. So you've got to remember that as well when you are actually editing. Now, I'm quite happy here, quite happy here. But for me, this is a tiny bit too bright. So let's just pull this back slightly. I'm watching that I don't crush any of the work that I've just done. That looks okay. Take it back up slightly. That looks a bit better there. That's probably my limit with this. So I'm going to close that down. Go up into develop. And now I am going to drop back the exposure again. And I'm going to add to that vignette that I've just done. To around about there because I want us drawn in here again and I'm going to selectively choose the areas I paint. So I'm going to paint in there. I'm going to bring this down slightly just so that our eyes aren't drawn, drawn to it too much. I might get away with it in there. I won't. So I'll erase that one. I'll just take that one back out. And I think we'll call it done at that. I think we'll actually call it done at that. So you can see the difference. Here's the before, here's the after. Now you may prefer the before. I have a couple of edits of this one already uh, because there's a couple of things that didn't work for me while I was shooting it. So I'll put both of them on the screen. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it lets you see how much you can actually change an image when you decide how you're going to tackle it. As you saw that image there, that, that was an overcast day. It was actually raining just before we got there. It was an overcast day and when I took the image, I've got two or three different edits of it, but I wanted to do one for you in Luminar and I wanted to take that down the darker route as well because I quite enjoy the dark moody images. So I hopefully you did get something from that type of edit. Now there's more I could have done to the image and indeed I think I probably will go in and tweak it even more. You saw the two different versions, you saw the Luminar edit which I did for the video and that is just solely for the video. So the time it took to do it is the time it took to do it. Whereas the edit I use when I use Luminar as a plug-in I prefer that edit, I'm not going to lie, I do prefer that edit, but that's because I'm now used to that as my workflow. I don't solely edit in Luminar Neo. Just to make it clear, I understand that we're not bug free with Luminar Neo and this first release. And an update came out during the week there to stop the Windows version crashing at the opening. Mine didn't do that, but I took the update anyway. And I'll be honest, since then it hasn't performed the same way as it did before the update. I wanted to do a compositing video using Luminar Neo for next week, but unfortunately as Mask AI isn't in the program yet, I'm going to hold that one back. I may do a, a quick exposure blend video just to show you how that can be done, but I'm not going to go into the detail of masking in objects until Mask AI is there and until I've actually used the Mask AI as well. Because I did try the other evening, and 
it didn't perform the way I wanted it to perform and it would also have taken too long to create the video for it as well. So I'm going to leave that until Mask AI comes out. Thanks again for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.